Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today we're gonna have ourselves a 1v1, of course, on Angoville. Our heroes today are once again going to be Mr. Cruz, this time around playing as the Soviets in the blue, and his opponent is still going to be Mr. PSG Red X-Wings playing as the OKW forces in the red. So spoilers, last game we saw a pretty long bout here between both of these players and Red X-Wings coming on top at the end, winning himself the first game in the series. Best of three, remember? And this time around, we're seeing them switching factions, uh, the exact same ones. So it's Soviets and OKW once again, but different players. So right off the bat, we see Mr. Red X-Wings taking his Stormpios straight straight through the road, going for that house, but seemingly wanting to get in it. Kuru's, however, popping his combat engineers inside, denying him that side of the map. Jukes a little bit, trying to see if he can get into the house, but decides to disengage and just simply go for the point on the left-hand side. Cruz going for conscripts, 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 nothing out of the ordinary. Red X-Wings going for Volks Grenadiers and then into Kubelwagen. Kubelwagen now out on the field, going to be popping out to help push. Combat Engineers popping forward into this house. We've seen a very, very aggressive use of these two houses here and this one over here. Of course, they are very sturdy, solid houses, so it is natural for players to want to control those. And it is, of course, very good to do so. So Combat Engineers going to be popping all the way up to the north, making sure that they have line of sight. They realize there's nothing over here. We're going to pop out and capture that point. As we see that Red X-Wings has drawn a little bit of a line there, connecting these points straight towards the fuel. The fuel is going to be captured there by those Volkswagens, but it's going to be disconnected in the north by the uh, Combat Engineers. So no fuel income there for PSG Red X-Wings. Red X-Wings popping his Storm Pios inside the house. Conscript's going to be trying to dislodge them. They're going to get themselves into some heavy cover. No, they're going to actually ignore them and just continue up to the north, deciding to disengage. Conscript Squad is going to be moving up and capturing this strategic point, which will actually connect the, uh, the point on the right-hand side if needed. So he doesn't actually need the strategic point necessarily. Still, though, there's nothing much on the right-hand side that he actually needs to control. Volks Grenadiers moving out of their fuel point, going to be engaging the conscripts. The conscripts going to be running away, popping into this barn here. They're going to engage the Storm Pios and the Volks Grenadiers at the same time. And up in the north, the Combat Engineers are engaging against Volksgrens and the Kuvul Wagon, which is currently set up to suppress fire. Conscripts popping out of the barn. They're going to have to retreat and run the gauntlet through the Storm Pios, but I'm pretty sure they'll be able to make it out of there alive as Cruz on the left-hand side continues to capture with his... Conscripts back at base. We do see a combat engineer squad getting brought up. Is it being brought up simply to build a uh, tech building? Yes, it is actually. Tier two going to be going down for Cruz right off the bat. Well, not off the bat, right? We're already three minutes in, so technically the bat has already swung, but pretty quickly going into tier two. And because of tier two, I can assume Maxims should be a strong option, especially against the Kubelwagen. So, folks, Grenadiers. Left on the right-hand side, going to be recapturing some territory as we see the Storm Pios laying down some wire on the front of this house, trying to prevent uh, Cruz from controlling it. Conscripts on the left-hand side do decap the strategic point, as they were trying to capture it, I guess. But they're getting engaged by the Kubelwagen and some Volksgrenz. Suppressive fire goes off on them, managing to get the suppression, or, yeah, the suppressive suppression effect going, as one of the Conscripts was standing on the side of the hay bale and not actually receiving the benefits of the cover. Conscripts and Combat Engineers pushing forward straight through the arch, getting right on top of those Volkturans. Volkturans unable to capture the victory point. They're going to be having to backpedal. They're going to run into the house, deny that territory there to Mr. Cruz, but he does have a lot of rifles in that direction. Should be able to withstand quite a bit. Middle of the road, we see Red X-Wings going for some mine placements, shoe mines, anticipating something coming onto the field, but we can see for Cruz, I mean, there's not going to be any vehicles. But of course, remember, the shoe mines are, you know... They're called shoe mines. You can trigger them with your shoe. <laughs> Anyways, Kubelwagen setting up some shots there on the Combat Engineers, but they are a nicely placed heavy cover there by that truck. They are completely obfuscated there, so they're not going to be taking any suppressive fire. Combat Engineers with their flamethrowers and conscripts moving up. Going to be engaging the Storm Pios. Kubelwagen repositioning itself. The house is open, but nobody is popping inside. And on the right-hand side, we see Volks Grenadiers engaging at long range against the conscripts. With the support of some Combat Engineers, they will, of course, lose. Left-hand side, we do still see some conscripts moving around as Volks Grenadiers move around as well. And in the center of the map, 
More stone piles being brought onto the field for Red X Wings as he just selects a well not Doctrine, but uh, he goes for a building, and that is the Mechanized Regiment headquarters. Out of the front of the base. Kubel Wagon getting caught out there in the open. Flamethrower burst goes off. Sets it ablaze as it explodes in a flaming flame of flame. Storm Pios not really having much luck here. They're gonna have to retreat. And Cruz managing to put himself in a very good position right now. Maxim Machine Gun getting brought out onto the field. Maxim Machine Gun will help out quite a bit against all this infantry. And with the Mechanized Regiment Headquarters, I can only assume he's going to be going for the Flag Half-Track. Left-hand side, Volks and Deer Squad down to one man. Conscripts engaging, but they get assaulted by a Storm Pile Squad and are forced to retreat. Still five men strong, but they don't want to, you know, kill themselves. Medics are now on the field there for Mr. Cruz, so he will be able to heal all those up and save himself that manpower. And on the north side, on the right-hand side, conscripts capturing territory as combat engineers are going to capture the victory point behind them. Volks Grenadiers moving up, throwing a nice volley there on the conscripts. The conscripts are running back. They're going to get themselves inside the house. Problem there is that they're going to have to exit through the front if they want to be able to retreat. Otherwise, they're going to get themselves caught inside the house, which is potentially what a Red x was expecting. And yeah, there they go. They pop out. They have to pop back in. Now they're going to pop out through the front and have to retreat. Running the gauntlet through the volley of fire there of the Volks Grenadiers. Can they pick up the kill on both squad members? No, not even on one of them. They both managed to actually make it out of there. Cruz going for his Doctrine, and that is, of course, the Shock Rifle Frontline Tactics. It is a good old standard that nobody's going to stop using. And he gets himself a Shock Group Squad on the field, which should help out quite a bit. Combat Engineers on the right-hand side going to be going for the munitions, as behind them we have a second Combat Engineer Squad going for the fuel. Volks Grenadiers moving around, going to be trying to get angles. We see mines getting laid down for both players in several locations. None of them getting triggered so far. Maxim Machine Gun on the left-hand side. Left by itself, but it's, you know, a decent actual squad to cap by itself because of its suppression capabilities and the fact that it's six members. Shock Troops getting themselves right on top of that Volksprint squad, forcing the retreat. Conscripts getting in the way, trying to stop the Volksprints, but they manage to rush through and run away. May lose one or more member? Nope, they all may get out of there, so they're quite fine. Combat Engineers on the right-hand side engaging against Storm Pyos. Storm Pyos had their Sweeper equipped, so they weren't able to provide as much damage on the approach. They pop out their uh, Sweeper, managing to kill one of the Combat Engineers, but the Flamethrower damage has done its toll and forces them to retreat, not wanting to risk getting themselves killed. Shock Troop getting in the way, going to be in intercepting the, uh, the Storm Pyos on the retreat, managing to get an additional kill. Ooh, we actually see a Puma coming into play. Interesting decision. Obviously, we don't have a... Uh, 18-8s just yet for Mr. Cruz, but he is popping them right now. And as quote-unquote good as it may be against infantry, like I said, the uh, Puma isn't actually that great against infantry. Its machine gun does a decent amount of damage. You know, it's not that bad. But its main gun is just horrible. It doesn't actually hit infantry. As you can see right there. So, while it'll help, it'll, you know, add a little bit of extra damage. It's not designed against infantry. Shock Troops and Conscripts trying to stop the Volksgrenadier. Volksgrenadier squad pops himself inside the house, then realizes, you know what, that Puma's actually not doing the job I would expect it to do, or was hoping it would do, so I'm going to have to retreat. And away goes the Volksgrenadiers, but they stay alive, and oh my god, the Puma actually killed something. And there goes on the retreat, the Shock Troops. Yeah, it's gotten three kills so far, but you know, considering the amount of time it takes, it's not amazing. It's okay, it's not amazing. Oof, center map of the Shock Troop squad running straight into that shoe mine with their own shoes. And they no longer have shoes as they're all dead. Storm Pyro squad going to be popping inside the house, denying the territory, getting some good damage there on the Conscript squad, forcing them to retreat as the Puma takes some shots endlessly from afar and, well, doesn't hit any infantry. Combat Engineers on the far right-hand side, capturing the rest of the territory as we see Red X-Wings just basically pinned to his base. I mean, he's not necessarily pinned, but territory-wise, he doesn't have anything. The only point is this one on the far edge of the map, and he's struggling to recover this territory while Conscripts are just holed up inside the houses, the stone houses, making sure that it is very difficult for Red X-Wings to push out. So Cruz having an excellent opening here on this second match. AT Grenade goes off, gets a good hit there on the Puma. Not going to be following it up. It's just going to, you know, do the damage that it wants to do, but that's about it. Double Volks Grenadier squads inside this house. We do not have Molotovs on the field for Cruz. Is he actually getting them? No, he's not even getting them, so nothing much is going to happen. Volks Grenadier squad popping out of the barn as they're going to be able to provide more damage support in that, you know, fashion. And we see the AT gun getting brought up onto the field for Cruz, trying to see if he can maybe put an end to that, uh, to that Puma. 
Combat Engineer Spud with the Flamethrower Burst going off. Grand Squad, oh, down to one man. Almost gets taken out there on the retreat. Manages to make it out of there themselves. Conscripts inside the house had been brought down to three men. Combat Engineer is pushing forward. The AT gun is set up to take shots at the Puma. Not in range, but looking in the right angle. Probably going to be moving up a little bit more. And Combat Engineer is on the right-hand side. Going to be running on top of these Volkskrens and trying to burn him out of that point. Victory points are 493 to 313 in the favor of Cruz. Flamethrower Burst continues to go off. Grand Squad down to two, but it makes it out. And the Puma continues to take shots at the Combat Engineers, but even the Combat Engineers are able to sit there and not really take too much damage. Combat Engineers is the only squad that has Veteran C3. It's done a significant amount of damage, and it uh, and it feels proud about it. Storm Pyos on the right-hand side are going to be trying to eliminate the Combat Engineers. Conscripts are able to get some good shots there on the Storm Pyos out in the open, forcing them to retreat. Combat Engineers squad down to four, not down to four, still at four men, but down to about 40% uh, strength. Very low health for all these men, but... Uh, it's going to be okay. And the Maxim Machine Gun is going to be brought up into the house, and that's actually going to pin Red X-Wings in this side of the map, essentially. Doesn't really have a good way of flushing it out, even. The enemy still has 300, points. 300 points now are left for Red X-Wings, as the point on the right-hand side is going to get capped. I mean, if Red X-Wings isn't able to pop back out, he's essentially going to lose it right here by victory points very quickly with a triple cap. Left-hand side, we do see Storm Pyos trying to go for some capping as Cruz has gone straight for that Tier 3, getting himself that T70. T70 in an excellent shape here to be able to provide some good support, although Puma can easily take it out. We also have a Rocket and Warfare on the field, which has been spotted now for uh, Cruz, so he at least is aware of it. He's currently trying to crawl his way back. Always remember that when you get spotted with a cloaked weapon, you can always just remove the camouflage and it'll return your uh, movement speed because even though you're spotted, your units are still, you know, thinking that they're invisible. You know, it's like they're putting their hands over their eyes and, you know, if he, if he can't see you, you can't see them. And they're moving very slowly. So, uh, so yeah, remember, you can always just pop that, make it so that they move at full speed and then pop it back on when you're, you know, a more reasonable location. Incendiary Barrage getting called in right in front of something. I don't know what was there. Maybe... To the Vulture squad. I don't know. Conscripts on the right hand side do capture that strategic point on the edge of the map, but they're forced to retreat. And the AT gun gets brought up on the left hand side to get some shots on the Puma. The Puma does take some damage, but it's still alive. Combat engineers are still on the field, but the conscripts got brought down to one man and forced to retreat. More conscripts retreating, as we only have one conscript squad on the field. It's actually on the base, so it's not even on the field. I'm gonna move up to the edge of the map and reinforce. Although it's moving a little bit too aggressively. It's actually going to not reinforce fully. Oh, yeah, it is. Combat Engineers also not getting fully healed up. Medics getting, having their work a little bit cut out for them. T-70 on the right-hand side. Potentially catching a Storm Pyo on the retreat. Takes a shot. It misses its shot. And the Puma is going to get brought up right in front of it. Puma potentially able to take out the uh, T-70 right here. Manages to whiff that first shot. The T-70 could move in this direction through the mine. Trying to bait it. But with the AT gun behind it gonna be kind of safe and the puma's probably not gonna chase it down puma does manage to nail it with a nice shot there on the rear doing a decent amount of damage more than 30 percent and uh it gets away more shoe mines in the center of the road and cindy barrage getting called in right on top of those smokes not gonna be helping out too much as they spot it quickly and move out of the way but at the very least they managed to not cap the point Infantry support weapon getting uh, built for Mr. Red X Wings. Should help, should help out a little bit against all these uh, houses that continually get uh, garrisoned. But, well, we'll see how well that works out. T70 moving on the right hand side. Puma and Rocket the Warfare slowly moving in that direction. Puma gets a nice shot. Rocket the Warfare set up to shoot. Remember, it's now an accuracy bonus on the Rocket the Warfare, so it's. Wow, that doesn't even have an effect. That's a whiff. It's shot. <laughs> And the Rocket and Warfare uh, gonna be moving itself. Oh, tries to move itself inside the house. Conscripts pop in, deny them that location, and forces a retreat. Very nice reaction there for Mr. Cruz. Combat Engineers getting some quick repairs going on that T70, as the T70 was also. Huh. It looked like it was. I don't know. Anyways, doesn't matter. Uh, conscripts on the left-hand side engaging the Volkskrens. Volkskrens down to two men. The Puma on the flank of the Conscripts. Not able to hit anything, even though they're just sitting there, not moving and not in cover. Oh, look, I hit the fence. Way to go. Good job, Puma. 
and the uh, the conscripts manage to win the engagement against the Volks and just simply stand there in front of the Puma because, well, it's a Puma. Uh, T-70 over on the right-hand side, going to be moving over to the left. Combat engineers now at the front of the base. SU-76 getting brought onto the field for Mr. Cruz, not wanting to take up, but still get something a little bit more tangible. T-70s, I mean, SU-76's gun should uh, be pretty strong against the Puma, although it itself is relatively weak. Conscript squad still hold up inside that house. The rocket and the warfare being utilized to uh, essentially spot for the infantry support gun, getting some good hits into that house, making it easier to hit. Remember, if you're shooting into the fog of war, you actually get more scattered. Storm piles and Volksgrins pushing over to the right hand side. Cindyary Barrage getting called in into this gap here, center of everything, but not hitting anything at all. And the conscripts do get forced away. T70 brought up, getting some shots on the Storm piles. The Storm piles trying to capture that victory point. 113 points left for Red X Wings. Wow, he could potentially lose this very quick as we now see the KV-8 coming onto the field for Cruz. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's game. He has nothing that he can stop it with. He has two Rocket and Warfers, but the Rocket and Warfers die ridiculously fast to a uh, KV-8. And, I mean, the Puma does a decent job, but, I mean, with the support of an AT gun, AT grenades and such, yeesh, that's going to be tough. KV-8 gets brought up. Rocket and Warfer popping out of the house as it realizes it's impending doom. Left hand side, the Puma is moving around. The Racket the Warfare now currently spotted in the center of the map. Getting burned to a crisp. Down it goes. Second Racket the Warfare in the other side of the, uh, well, not the other side, but the end of the road. Getting a good hit there on the KV-8, but the KV-8 ignoring the damage, really not caring too much about it. Puma getting brought up to get some good shots there on the rear armor of the KV-8, but the flamethrower is going off on the Racket the Warfare. Going to be clearing out a second Racket the Warfare here, even though it's already in the base, so that's not too bad. And the infantry support gun, oh, nailing a good shot there on those conscripts, forcing the retreat of that and not allowing them to even cap that point. Out of control goes the T-70, so at least the Puma manages to eliminate that. Gets abandoned, but then gets killed afterwards as the KV-8 gets brought up. KV-8 still at about 75% strength. We do also have the SU-76 on the right-hand side, engaging against these Volksgrens with a Shrek. Combat engineers and conscripts are going to be capturing some more territory as the KV-8 is almost taunting Red x here as he is exposing his rear armor to him. Not even caring too much. GG by Mr. Red x as he loses his Puma. GG calling the game here, even though he maybe could have fought a little bit more. But realizing, okay, that's fine. I messed up game two. One to one. We still had, got the A's game. Better just call this one a loss and uh, refocus for the next game. So a quick match. Not as amazing as the other one. And Cruz handily getting himself a victory and bringing himself back into this series. So I hope you at least enjoyed the game, though. If you have any positive or negative remarks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any replays you want to send me, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the A's match.